with many conversations that I've had and talked with people and situations and uh, texting people back and forth, you know, I want us to uh, grasp a couple of things. That song that we sang this morning is the song to say, fill this house. What I need is more of Jesus in my life, more of you in my life. We were singing that this morning. And as we were singing that this morning, I, I was just resonating with what I'm talking about today because what we need to do is we need more of Christ in our life. Some of us are in big trouble right now. Many of us have walked through troubled waters. But what we need, the answer is, is more of Jesus. Understanding our identity. You see, when we put our identity into someone else, or into something else, I promise you this, it always gets us in trouble. But knowing who we are is important. Knowing who we are, fill this house, the song that we were singing this morning, Matt, was just fill this house, and you said it, fill this house right here. You know, sometimes we say, oh, fill this this place, Holy Spirit. No, I'm saying fill this person. Fill this person right now. What we need is more of Jesus in our lives. And, um, And a lot of times when we don't know who we are in Christ Jesus, part of our issue is, is we we fall away. We get discouraged. We we, we look at ourselves and, and we find distraction. And people say some of the meanest things ever, ever. People. You call them your friend. So what happens so many times is if we don't know who we are, we struggle. And today I want to talk about standing firm. One of the toughest things to do is to stand firm. To stand and do what's right. Because I say this all the time. It's not that you know what's, you don't know what's wrong, you don't know what's right. You are not ignorant. You can look at your friend and say, hey, you're not ignorant. I'm, you're not. Because you know what's right and you know what's wrong. The problem is, Choosing to do what's right. Choosing to honor God. I see somebody over here bumping their friend. Hey, maybe you are, but he's not. (laughs) You see, the deal is, we know what's right. We know what's wrong. Part of our frustration and our struggle is choosing to do what's right. And when we sing this song, fill this house, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. It helps us, enables us, and then strengthens us to choose to do what's right. God has plans for you to prosper, you to make. God has plans for you to choose to do what is right. So what do you do? I'm promising you this. And day to day is to say, Holy Spirit, come in my life. And sometimes we, we listen to the critical spirit or the critical spirit talks to us and, and hinders us and, and we get discouraged. And so I want to encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit, to ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you and to come into your life. Every day, say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Every day. As I was going over this this morning, I was practicing in my office. And uh, I was like, hey, man, it's been a long time since you spoke. You better look in the mirror. And I kind of got scared, so I closed the door and didn't look in the mirror anymore. And... uh, (laughs) But as I was praying this morning, I felt this, I felt this, and I kept saying it in my mind. I said, you know what? I'm going to take a moment. Maybe if you're online today, or maybe if you're in this place, you have an identity problem, and you are personally struggling with your own life. Maybe you've even said to yourself, or you've told someone, man, I'm suicidal. I feel like I could take, care of my, take my life. When you feel this way, I'm asking you to search your heart and to find your identity in Jesus. Because when you find your identity in Jesus, you find strength against that. Because Jesus is the answer. One of the the things I was talking about this morning as I was talking uh, uh, with some people this morning, I, I said this, I said, if you just knew who you are, no, I mean, we've, this last couple of weeks, we watched this, this uh, series of these um, knights and kings, and, and I was watching this, and, and do you understand, I mean, this, this guy, this king, was, he had a son, and he walks up to this guy who is the enemy 
of the king. And he goes, do you know what happens if you hurt a hair on my head? You will be wiped out. Do you realize who you are? You are a son and a daughter of the king. You are. When you understand your identity, no matter what you are facing, I'm telling you, when your identity is on Jesus and not on someone else or not on a circumstance or not on your talent, when your identity is in Jesus, you will find the strength and you know who you are when Satan comes to you and says, you have no value. You say, hey, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? You can't touch me. You can't touch me. You can look at me nose to nose, face to face, eye to eye, and I'm telling you this, you can't touch me because I know who I am. I am a son. I am a daughter of the king. And you can't touch me. Now I'm going to preach. (laughs) Open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. If you don't have your Bible with you today, I think I have the notes up here and Uh, You can also go on to the app, and you'll see my notes today, and you can write some notes along. But my my message this morning is stand firm. Stand firm. When we want to stand firm, the thing that I'm talking about is choosing to do what's right and to place it into your life. Stand firm. So let's read this out of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. It says this, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. Woo! Right? Our struggles are not against flesh and blood, but against what? Rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. You remember this as a kid? Remember to put on the full armor of God. I mean, this, is, this right here is a, a series of messages, but I'm gonna, just going to hit on one thing. So that when you, on the day the devil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. That's the name of my message this morning. After you have done this, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet filled with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Woo! Take up the shield of faith. Hey, I know who I am. I'm I'm a son. I'm a daughter of the king. Take up the shield of faith in which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? How do I stand firm? I ask myself this question. As I read this, it says, as as I do this, as I place this into my life, as I place and I say, Holy Spirit, come into my life, then I stand firm. How do I do this? I ask myself that question. How do I do this? How do I walk and navigate through this storm? Because you know we all have different storms and different things come to our way, and then all of a sudden there's this tidal wave out of the corner, this freak wave that comes and hits us. We're saying, now how do I, how do I handle this problem? How do I handle this situation? How do I walk through these waters? I've never been here before. How do I stand firm in the midst of this storm? You see, when our identity is in Christ and our identity and we know who we are, I'm telling you this, it doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the circumstance. You say, but Pastor Russ, You don't understand. It's horrible. I understand. I've walked through horrible waters too. But the circumstance has nothing to do with my identity. Nothing. 
when my identity is in Jesus and my identity is in Christ, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, I can stand strong because I say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. And sometimes, some of the circumstances that we are in is because we choose to do what was wrong. (laughs) Man, if I could beat myself with a bat, I would be a mess. Right? We choose to do things that are wrong. We have these horrible circumstances that come, and then we struggle with who we are in Jesus because of making wrong choices. So I'm saying let's learn to stand firm and say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. And then let's stand then and make the right decision. But then also, there are times when we try to make the right decision. We're working on making the right steps. And there's a wave that comes out of nowhere and crashes against us. It is then that you find your identity in Jesus. Because yes, we walk through storms. Yes, we walk through difficult times. And sometimes you might be, if it's a difficult between 1 and 10, you're at a 10. Or you're at a 12. It seems like it's even unbearable. It seems like it's impossible. How am I going to walk this? How, what's the an- I don't have any answers. This is horrible. The, my life situation, this circumstance is, dry, is, is horrible. What? How? Oh, my. That's when you turn and you find your identity in Jesus, and then you begin to know how to stand firm and continue to choose to do what is right. Because when the storm comes, it's easy just to throw it all into the wind. So I give up. And if your identity is somewhere else, I'm telling you the devil comes in to kill, to steal, and to destroy your life. And he wants you to kill yourself. He wants to. He comes. The Bible says he is wicked. And if your identity is not found in Christ, it's extremely difficult to stand firm. It's extremely difficult. We must place Christ in our lives. You see, I think so many times when we understand who we are, if we don't understand who we are, we don't know who we are, we struggle with joy. We struggle with the true happiness. Have you ever lost your joy? Oh my gracious. You see, if you don't understand who you are, if you don't place your identity in Christ, I believe it is directly connected to your joy. If you do not have joy, it should be a red flag sailing in your boat, saying, hey, Captain, we got a problem. You see, your identity, when you know who you are, I promise you this, you will have joy. So ask yourself this question. Where's my joy thermometer? In any situation, in any circumstance, I've used this before, I've said this before, but I had one pastor that said, Russ, I, I don't know about you, but you could fall into the sewer and come out with a ham sandwich. I have gone through difficult times in my life, but I'm telling you this, I strive and I, with determination, I find my identity in Jesus, and I'm telling you this, I don't lose my joy. Now, I've made mistakes, I've I've chosen, and I've done wrong. And I have come to repentance because of that. And then I find myself going back to saying who I am. And when I do that, I find that my joy is restored in Jesus. He he doesn't remember and hold a grudge. (laughs) Could you imagine if God held a grudge? Hmm. 
God does not hold a grudge. We do. You ever held a grudge before? Oh, you think you're doing so good. Oh, I know the feeling. But it eats at you. You see, the thing is, when we look at this, we must understand there is a spiritual war going on around you. You know, we know God creates and God created you and in you is that creation. We must understand the devil can't create nothing. So you know what he does? He distorts it. He lies about it. He makes it delusional. He perverts it. You see, Satan wants, wants you to hide. He wants your life to be diminished. He wants to steal and let you know that you are not a child of God. And if we lose that, we lose our identity. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 starts to begin to talk about who we are. You see, when you know who you are, when you understand who you are, you begin to get excited about who you are. Right? Hi, I'm Russ. That's easy for me to say. I meet anybody. I'll talk to you. I'm excited about who I am. I'm excited about my life. You see, here it is. First Peter says, when you know who you are, look at who you are. You are a chosen people. You're chosen. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. That's who you are. Out of darkness? Are you in darkness today? God called you out of that. Are you have a dark cloud over your life? God called you out of that. Why? Because you're chosen. You're royal priesthood. He loves you. You are his special possession. Yeah. Woo! I got so excited I spit. You see, this is who you are. God's called you out of darkness into a wonderful light once you were not a people. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you were not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Oh, oh thank the Lord that I've received mercy. Thank the Lord that I've received mercy. Look at this. I must understand that in Christ, I am completely accepted. That's what that says. Completely. Maybe you feel broken. <laughs> Maybe you feel in fragments. In Christ, I am completely accepted. I think sometimes things in our life, something happened to us. Maybe we grew up in a situation that was not very good. Maybe you've experienced something horrible in your life when you were younger or years ago and, and you've stepped out of that and, and you look back and, and, and you, you look at yourself and you find yourself saying, that's just who I am. I'm a person that gets abused. I'm a person that gets verbally tore down. I'm a person that can't stand up for myself. I can't say it. I'm the person who's in a conversation or an argument, and I have to, when I walk away from the argument, I'm going, oh, I should have said that. 
Why didn't I think of that when I hear that person? You're like, this is just the way that I am. I'm, I, 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 I can't do anything right. I can't, I, your identity and you, you, just because of the things you've gone through, man, you look at this and you don't understand who you are. So you take and you say the most wicked lie and you say it to yourself and you say, this is just who I am and I'm going to live with it. That is the most wicked lie you can place into your life. Do not believe that. You are a son and a daughter of the king. I want you to picture that in your mind. When you're facing a battle, you walk up and go, do you know who I am? <laughs> Snap. I don't know if I even did it right, but my daughter can do it really good. Do you even know who I am? Ha! Bring it on. You are bringing disaster. The situation is in my life. And I'm telling you this. You are not going to be my joy stealer because I know who Jesus is. He is in my life. And I know this wave is coming and it's going to destroy. It's going to cause me pain. It's going to cause me frustration. But I know this. I know who I am. And you are not going to steal my joy because I am telling you this. I am a child of God. Right? I am completely accepted. If you're in my notes, we're going to jump a bunch. Look at what it says in verse 10 again. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Once you were not a people... But now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You see, before, before God made you, he knew you were going to go through this. Thanks, God. <laughs> Before you were born, he knew you were going to go through this. He knows who you are. We must know who we are. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. You see how when we look at this, we ask ourselves these questions. When I know who I am, I know I am totally forgiven, and I place this into my life. We must understand that Jesus paid the price for our sins. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, For the blood of Christ we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God in our lives. We get stuck on all the things that we've done wrong and we say, This is who I am. I'm saying it's not. When you understand who you are, you are forgiven. And when you are forgiven, God does not hold a grudge. It is gone. That's right. And now you're a new person. So choose to start to do what is right. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. I'm challenging you today. When you know and you've placed Christ into your life, you desire to say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. If you're walking through storms, I challenge you throughout the day, say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. When that car cuts you off, you say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life right now. When you're walking through something and somebody says something about your past and they just say, that's who you are, you say, Holy Spirit, come into my life right now because I want to believe that. 
My desire, my, my rust nature is I want to believe what they just said because that's who I used to be. And your identity gets killed again. With your identity goes your joy and your happiness, your fulfillment of life. You see, we need to say, moment by moment, when you're walking through a storm, I'm telling you this, something comes into your mind, I'm telling you this out loud, verbally say, as you're driving down in your car, as you're in your workspace, say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Holy Spirit, fill this house. Man, Holy Spirit, what I need is more of you right now. Because people will say things to you, they will lie to you, they will say hurtful things to you, and our nature, our tendency is to accept it. But when you understand who you are, you stand up and say to that, hey, do you know who I am? I'm forgiven. Yeah, I messed up. I've made mistakes. And don't understand, we're forgiven, but there is a consequence sometimes, right? Right? You do something crazy, you get pulled over and talk to this guy that has this little blue and red light, bubbly light on top of his car, he hands you a piece of paper, you are going to pay, right? There is a consequence. You can be forgiven. He can walk away and say, hey, I forgive you. All right, but here's uh, $300. Woo! You are forgiven, but there is a consequence. Understand that. Never confuse that. Never confuse that. You are forgiven, but you are not that person. You understand that? You can take from this point on with forgiveness and say, I am not that person. And there are people who are in your past that will say, you are that person. It's a lie. It's a lie. When you do that, you place that into your life. You say, Holy Spirit, fill this house. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life because what I need is more of you. Matt's going to come on up. We're going to close this service because I'm telling you what, this is where the answer is today. In 2022, I've been working on 2022 messages and the themes and from January to February, in the middle of February to Valentine's Day, we're going to do a series, and it's going off of the theme for 2020, is who we are. This is who I am. This is who I am. This is who I am. I'm free from this I'm free from disaster. I'm free from people saying things. I'm free from that. I'm free. Some of you need to understand you are free from the wickedness going around you, from the past things that have hurt you, from the things that are so bad that are on your mind, the things that you think about throughout the day. You are free from those. You need to learn to say, do you know who I am? You're free from that. When you know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, it makes a difference in your life. I'm free from this. I'm free from this bondage. I'm free from somebody telling me you're worth nothing. I'm free from somebody walking out of my life. I'm free from whatever it may be. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. My joy is found in the Lord, not in my circumstances around me. You hear what I'm saying? This is, this is us. This is me. If you can grab anything, it's this. You are free when you stand in Jesus. You are free, you are free, you are free. We need to say, Holy Spirit, I need more of you. Holy Spirit, I need more. I'm challenging you to say that every day. And I promise you this, the Holy Spirit is there. There are many of you here that would stand right now if I said you wouldn't testify about something in your life, you'd say, yes, I know that when I call out to the Holy Spirit, I feel His presence in the middle of a storm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Pastor Russ, I'm not doing so good with Jesus today. Maybe you're here right now and you're saying, Pastor Russ, what I need is I need this in my life. Because right now, 
Jesus and I aren't together. It's not, it's not happening. I, I can't say, do you know who I am? So in a moment, I, in a couple moments, I'm gonna have us bow our heads and I'm gonna ask you that question. Here at KCA, we're family. We will all evaluate our hearts. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand and we will pray a prayer together. Putting us and Jesus together. You see, the thing is, if you can't say I'm free from my past, if you can't say I'm free from this situation, I'm telling you this, you need to call out to God. That's your answer. You can go to counseling for 30 years and God can heal it in less than three tenths of a second. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I like three tenths of a second. But I'm challenging you throughout the day to cry out and say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. The answer is Jesus. Not a book, not a counselor. The answer is Jesus. So I'm gonna ask everybody in this place just to stand with me this morning. <clears throat> and as you stand, I'm just gonna ask you to bow your head. Like I said, I want you just to search your heart. This is you and Jesus. This is you and Jesus. This is the answer. This is between you and Jesus. Maybe you're sitting here and you're going, Pastor Russ, I'm not doing so well right now. In a moment, I'm going to have an opportunity and we're going to raise hands and pray for that. But first, maybe you're right now saying, Holy Spirit, I need Jesus. You're saying, Pastor Russ, today I need Jesus. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I'm just going to ask you, if that's you right now, wherever you are, just raise your hand. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Okay, here at KCA, we're family. We're going to pray this prayer together. So I'm going to ask everybody in this place to pray this prayer with these 12, 15 people that have raised their hand this morning. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, today I ask that you come into my life and forgive me. Forgive me of the sin that I have placed into my life. And today, I know that I am forgiven because you are a God that loves me. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life and forgiving me. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I mentioned a lot about storms. I remember we were in Nevada somewhere, some Utah, Arizona place. I don't know where I was, but it was storming. It was just pouring down rain storming to the point to where I had to slow down. I slowed down. Can you believe that? I couldn't see. Maybe you're feeling that way in your life. You're walking in a storm and you can't see. You feel nothing because the pain is so great. I want you to know I believe in prayer. My God does miracles. He does. Maybe it's a situation at work. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's your past. It's your storm. I want to pray for you this morning. So if you say, Pastor Russ, that's me. I believe that God is with us today. Yes. And so I'm going to challenge you. If you're in a storm, I want you just to raise your hand right now. We want to pray. Let's just pray.
pray. Let's just pray. Let's pray. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our lives. Lord, we don't know, but we know that you are with us. And Lord, I pray for your spirit to rise up with strength in our lives. I pray for your spirit to lead me, to guide me, to help me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. Let your presence surround this situation. Let your presence be around the circumstance. But Lord, most of all, speak to me. Speak to me. When the pains seem so amazingly, when the waves are pushing so hard against me, let me sense your spirit in my life. Spirit, you are welcome in our lives this morning. Holy Spirit, you are